Once people see that, that these are essentially decentralized businesses that operate and sell block space, people start to understand that what's unique about this infrastructure layer is the first infrastructure layer in history that we can all participate in because of the behavioral incentives of a token system versus equity. And so when I look at it, I just look at the growth of the space and it grows up a hundred and something percent a year, which is twice the speed of the internet because obviously it's built on internet rails, which should go quickly. And I just extrapolate that trend out and I look at it and it's like, well, it's a two and a half trillion dollar space today. If we carry on by 2032, it's a hundred trillion. I'm like, that's the largest accumulation of wealth in all human history in the shortest period of time. Even if I'm wrong by 50% because I'm a total moron, it's the same as a hundred years of value accrual of the S&P 500 in eight years. Right. It's, it's bananas. It's because we can own this adoption layer and all of these businesses selling block space. That's all it's about. Best thing is just try and capture that growth first. If you're going to do anything in the space, stop trying to focus on the one thing. Just capture two and a half trillion to a hundred trillion. You'll be right. absolutely fine. The cryptocurrency market is growing at an unprecedented speed and in so doing is presenting the biggest wealth generating opportunity of all time. That's the latest message from CEO of Real Vision Finance, Raul Pal. Powell predicts that the crypto market, currently valued at $2.5 trillion, could reach $100 trillion by 2032. This represents a 50x increase and would mark the largest accumulation of wealth in the shortest period in all of human history. Even if Powell's prediction is off by 50%, it would still outperform the S&P 500 over its 100-year history in just over eight years. Make sure to watch this next clip, where Powell explains his crypto strategy and portfolio allocation. Also, if you enjoy listening to crypto-related content, please show your support by liking and subscribing to this channel by following the link in my bio. And get access to my free daily crypto updates and expert predictions direct to your inbox. Each newsletter contains market intelligence, on-chain data and latest updates from experts in the crypto space. All of this is available completely free of charge. Signing up only takes a moment and you can always change your mind later on. Now back over to Raul Pal. I don't trade anything in macro really anymore. Um, my personal portfolio is pretty much, well, it's 100% crypto. The, uh, you know, within Global Macro Investor and Real Vision Pro Macro, there are some technology bets and other bits and pieces around that because it's all part of the same trade. What I found over this process was that everybody in macro had been struggling for about 10 years. The, the odd trade came along, like the buy bonds where diamonds trade, you can make a <laughs> ton of money on it. But there was... People were struggling because we didn't understand the world. Equities just kept going up and we just couldn't get our teeth into anything because we weren't looking at the right thing. There was a mega trend going on, which was this liquidity cycle. And once you saw it, you realized that everything was correlated to it. So if everything is correlated to it, then it becomes interesting to say, okay, well then if it's all the same trade, what's the best performing asset? Now, the other really important thing, what I think has happened, and it took me too long to realize this, I'm annoyed at myself, is that the Federal Reserve and all the central banks took uh, took away left tail risk. Left tail risk in a global macro view really is a debt deflation, which is when your value of your collateral falls too much that you can't pay for the debts and it gets called upon. And people sell the collateral and you get into this cycle. We had that in 2008. What did they do? Debase the currency. What did it do? Optically make asset prices rise. So the collateral went up. The Europeans did it even harder in 2012. So what they've said, and then we did it again in COVID. So what they've said is, you cannot have a debt deflation. We will not allow it. And we will debase the currency by 8% a year to pay for it. Think of that as a put option that you're paying on the system not blowing up which is a very different way of looking at it, as opposed to, hmm, I can't believe they're robbing me of 8%. If you say, hey, listen, it's a mutualized cost of a put option, and we all pay 8% so the whole system doesn't blow up. Okay, so if we've taken away the left tail, and everything is correlated on this debt refi cycle, and they have to debase currency over time to do it, well, this may well be the best macro risk-taking opportunity of all time. Mm-hmm. And then when you just break it all down, what I did simply was to, was divided all of the main assets by the global liquidity or even the Fed balance sheet, whatever measure you want to use, M2 doesn't really matter. Nothing else goes up except the NASDAQ and crypto. Mm -hmm. 